So when we generally look at NetFlow data, it has the default behavior to want to generate unidirectional records. And sure, this gives us you know two different flow records for a single session, but it does certainly make it a little bit more difficult for us to be able to kind of look at the full picture. So flow stitching allows us to be able to see the full picture. I'll come back to this slide here in just a moment, but we can see an example of the flow stitching here in this particular slide. So we're gonna have traffic coming from um, this 10.222 going to 10.111. All right, and then obviously the next flow is going to be just that traffic coming back. And <clears throat> when we look at these two different line items, we could easily stitch them together to have one single flow. And when we look at that one single flow, we can see the client IPs, the server IP, we can see what port, what protocol, the client bytes, so this was just taken from this line item, and then the server bytes, which was taken from this line item. All right, so we can also see any security um, group tags that were associated with each of the unique hosts or, or devices. All right, so this gives us the full picture of the network step uh, session. All right, so in addition to that, we also have deduplication. So this is um, looking at, hey, what happens if we have multiple flow collectors, right? And actually we have an example of it here. And let's say, for example, um, we don't need those multiple flow records, all right? So if we have traffic that might be coming from one flow record and then another flow record, um, even though it's one single flow of traffic, you know, we can basically eliminate or uh, make sure that, you know, we're not throwing out traffic that we don't need, but if there is duplicated traffic, we're getting rid of it, but we're also not losing any unique information, All right? So those are some of the unique things about uh, Stealthwatch and our flow collectors. Um, when we look at the flow records, it is going to see the whole end-to-end -end communication. So who started the session? When did it happen? Where was the traffic originating from? Um, how uh, big was it? And what type of traffic were they using? Um, and then, of course, if we wanted to see the source and the destination, so who was the session that was um, being generated with, we could see that as well. And then we can always get into more context if we need to. All right, we're gonna look at some additional components too. So we don't have to have all of these like um, Talos or um, you know things like UDP Director, but we'll look at some additional options that we can have. And actually, when we get to the UDP Director, this is kind of neat because Let's say, for example, in addition to sending our NetFlow data to our flow collector and to SMC, let's say we do want to send it to a SIM or some sort of network uh, monitoring system. This UDP director can basically take that traffic and forward it to other locations so that we aren't um, pushing too much traffic um, all throughout the network. We're sort of aggregating it to this one um, position and then sort of bouncing it from there. So uh, we'll kind of dig into each of these um, as we go through. So um, the flow sensor allows us um, additional security context and essentially it allows us to be able to, to have some additional um, telemetry for all of the, the physical infrastructure. So it's going to give us Layer 7 application data, it's going to give us TCP flags, more accurate round trip and re server response times, um, can be a physical or a virtual appliance. And then we kind of briefly, you know, touched on that UDP director, but you can kind of think of it like a replicator, all right? Not from Star Trek, right? <laughs> but it's um, preventing us from having lots and lots of flow logs, all right? So it still allows us to be able to support NetFlow and Syslog and SNMP, but it sent 
you know, transparently to um, lots of different collection points. So if we do have, you know, those those SIMs or network management stations, um, we can send traffic to multiple collection points. Um, and it just helps make integration of um, lots of different um, multiple types of data much, much more simpler. Also available, physical or virtual. And then we also have our threat intelligence license. So if any of you aren't familiar with the TALIS group, it um, is a global threat campaign. So it allows us to be able to look at a huge base of information that's constantly being updated. So they give us some numbers here. I'm sure these um, are, are increasing by the day, but we have 1.5 million daily malware samples, 16 billion daily web requests, 100 plus threat intelligence partners, and millions of telemetry agents. So it's this constant updated um, mechanism, right? Because there are constantly new types of malware that are being invented and being deployed. And so this is what is going to stay sort of on top of everything. It's gonna be you know two steps ahead. Oops, I went to go forward and I went backwards. <laughs> uh, we also have the AnyConnect network visibility module. Um, sometimes you'll just see this written out as NVM and it helps to see our user endpoints behavior. So if we have end user devices that are um, whatever they may be, laptops or, or mobile devices, iPhones, things like that, with an AnyConnect client on it, um, we're gonna have an endpoint concentrator that brings all that into the flow collector and it allows us to be able to evaluate any devices that might not physically be on our network but are coming in through the AnyConnect VPN client. All right, and then of course, we see some examples of some use cases in here. Obviously, this is going to depend on how big of an organization you have and what different additional tools or things that you might need. So if we're deploying StealthWatch um, in our data center, then we might be enabling NetFlow from our branch offices going to our data center. Um, of course, we don't have to do that if, um, you know, if we're worried about consuming resources over the WAN, um, but we can also go from our inter internet edge, we can go from our campus LAN, and so there's lots of different recommended ways on how to deploy StealthWatch Enterprise.